there's a deer gonna come right underneath me. Life offers no guarantees, but the one thing we've learned for sure is that the time we have is indeed precious. The more time we spend with family, friends, and with nature can make the difference between living a good life and living a great one. Join us on our quest to be participants rather than observers, to learn from our mistakes, to share our successes and our failures, as we spend all of the time we have chasing our dreams, fueling our passion, and fueling the fire in the great outdoors. Good to see you. I guess you must be here for your deer mounts. I'm here for my deer mounts. We're here at Gary Foreman's Taxidermy in Balcarren. Now you've got three deer for yes, me? Yes, they do, yeah. Three deer, where are they? Are they inside? I, I got them in the back there, in the place where we take the shots. Oh, photo tree. Perfect, let's go check these out. I'm excited. Okay. All right, well, these are the mounts. These look incredible. So many memories. I know it's taken a little while to get them back, but you know what? It's worth the wait. This is just fantastic. Yep. Now, we have Diane's 10 point uh, from a couple years back, her first mounter, that's my wife's deer. Okay. And then this guy behind you, there's a big history behind that. We're gonna talk about that later in the program. And then this is our Fort, Fort Francis, Fort Francis uh, buck that I went after with Brad wow. Fife. Just great deer, a heavy dark rack buck, uh, a big wide nine from Manitoulin Island. Man, I can't wait to get these back in the studio. We're gonna go check these out and hear the stories. We're here at Fuel the Fire TV studios and we have wide nine. We just got this deer back and I love taking an up close and personal look at these deer we harvest after we get them back from the taxidermist. Gary did a great job on these deer and there's some story behind this. I've had multiple interactions with this deer. Unfortunately, I didn't get to harvest him. Our pro staff, Warren Corbier did. Now, as luck would have it, his camera gear failed. We didn't get the harvest on video. This year for season six, he had several target bucks on camera, but none of them showed themselves. And at the end of the season, Warren decided to take a meat deer. Lady Luck was not on his side yet again. He did get the harvest on video, but the audio failed. As far as I'm concerned, any deer we harvest is a great deer, and I'm sure this year, Warren is gonna have his audio double-checked and his video triple-checked. Whether it's luck or skill, we'll let you be the judge with this next piece of video of a Manitoulin whitetail. A good friend of mine, Curtis Hare, a local constable for the tribal police, took apprentice hunter, his son, Reed, out into the field, and they harvested a fantastic whitetail. Well, I got this nice nine point here. I shot him at around, I think it was 840, 839. We just got him back to the truck here. And it's only my second deer. So he's a big, wide, long. I think we're gonna shoulder around him, but. 
All right, we're back in the studio with a fantastic Manitoulin Whitetail. I have Curtis and his son Reed here, who last year harvested this great Whitetail buck. Now, Dad, what stands out to you about this particular hunt? This one was great because Reed had excellent patience with this one. He watched it for about two and a half minutes before he took a shot on this one. Awesome. And now, you know, Lots of times I, I see a deer and I, I, I question, I'm like, Do, should I take the first deer that I see? Was this the first buck you saw that morning? No, it was not. What'd you see? About 20 minutes earlier, a little spike came out following a doe. He was hot on a doe. And I mean, I guess he's learned that if you shoot the little ones first, you're not gonna shoot a big one. And this guy was hot on, on, on the tail after that? Yeah. About 20 minutes later? Yeah. Nice. Now, if you could pick out something that stands out about this hunt, what what stands out? Well, what stands out to me is I got to be there with my family. And you've got a monster white tail down. Well, congratulations, that's a great deer. And thanks to dad for taking them out. These guys, that's how you do it, folks. You get your youngsters involved, you help fuel their passion, you fuel their fire, and you get them outdoors. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. of edges you've got a fence row as an edge you've got you know deciduous trees as that edge you've got conifers in the back you've got a planted field versus you know a, a grown over bush um, so th this is like a, a a pinch point for deer to travel that edge this edge that whole edge in there it would just be a cool spot to be and then you could see everything also really cool when you're bow hunting. So maybe we look at at the backdrop being um, this tree, because you're even in the fall, as exposed as you might be, you've got all those conifers behind you, which are gonna, you're gonna blend into all of those versus being exposed. All right, so that wraps up what we're gonna do in this field. We have two hunting locations, two stand locations on the edges. We've set up our apples and our trail cams and we're going to see what we have in store coming out into this field and we're going to head over to our mineral stations and put out that ever important antler obsession trophy mineral mix hey folks i'm really excited about this setup well i'm excited about every sit but this is sit number eight for us for bow season and i'm hunting a farm that i got permission on that has some really good genetics now, the guys are out in the field. I shouldn't say guy, it's Eric and Peggy and all of their female staff. They're planting garlic today on the far end of this field. It's about, I don't know, I'd like to say 20 acres or more. But they're out there, which is fine. That's giving me some, some cover noise. And the deer are used to those guys working out here anyway. Now, like I said, this is our eighth set and we've yet to see any hard antlered box. I'm interested particularly about this field. I want to see where they're coming out. Now I think they're coming out to my left, which is why we're hunting this northwest wind. I'm hoping that they do not come from my right because they'll probably win me. We've got a pine forest behind me, but we've got some deciduous trees, some maples, all bordering this fence so we've got all kinds of pinch points we talked about those transition zones where you're going from either a field to a hardwood or a swamp to a fence row or whatever the case may be those are all transition points and I'm hoping that after these guys leave the field we'll have an opportunity at one of these monster bucks that are roaming these parts. I can hear some, some leaves crunching. But I can't get my eyes on them. It sounds like multiple deer. They gotta be right behind me.
was just covered up in deer there for a while. I couldn't even move. But that's not the buck we're looking for. There's four shooters out here. Just love to see one of them. We got a little bit of time left. We'll see what happens. Folks, it is Sunday, the 22nd of November. It's the last day of the Manitoulin rifle hunt. Um, it's been a sad few days here on Manitoulin. Um, we've lost Constable Mark Hoving. Um, he was killed in the line of duty uh, as a member of the Ontario Provincial Police here on the island, which am I. It's been a very emotional sad day for me all the members of the OPP and especially for the Manitoulin Island um, it's been amazing to see the communities come together to mourn the loss of Mark um, and anyway we're hoping this morning in memory of Mark um, I'm able to harvest a deer and so we'll see what happens. Rest in peace, Mark. Folks, so I found my deer. Didn't go 30 yards. A monster by no means compared to the buck meal shot uh, yesterday or maybe it was the day before up north near Fort Francis. Um, but it's the Sunday of the Manitoulin deer hunt. Uh, we know there's bigger bucks in the area, but uh, at least now we'll have some good meat in the freezer for the winter. So we're out here feeling our passion, feeling the fire, and getting outdoors. You know, just a, a real emotional connection for Daryl and um, for everyone in the eulogy. His wife said something, and, it, and it's been posted, reposted a lot this week. And I just, I, I have so much respect for what she said because it just keeps playing over and over in my head and that's the forgiveness part and the understanding part about the whole event and she said whatever that outrage and anger is helping you accomplish love will do a better job and uh those are important words. And again, our hearts go out to those guys. And he, he is remembered. Mark is remembered for sure. 
Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Hey folks, in this week's learning curve tip, we're talking about transition zones for white-tailed deer. Now, on your piece of property, when you're thinking of where two pieces intersect that are different, so you can have conifers and deciduous trees, you could have a, a field edge butting up to a swamp, you could have a high area to a low area like this one. This is a travel corridor for white-tailed deer. We came upon this game path and we're gonna set up a, a mineral station and a, a double tree stand for archery in this particular area because deer like to have that as much field of view as possible and this gives them a distinct advantage to see what's low and to see what's high. They're gonna travel this way through because there's a big field at the end of this ridge and we're gonna try and pinch them off as they're coming to feed in the evening, in the late evening. As you know, deer always do. They come out in those last few minutes of, of daylight and we're gonna try and pinch them off for that. So we're gonna set up a, a trail cam for this on this transition area and see what we have in store for this fall's hunt. Hopefully it'll be something good. All right, we have a storm front moving in. We've got a couple of days left. Now we're chasing a big guy in here. And I've had the opportunity, like you saw, I had an opportunity with my bow, but he was too far. Oh, we've got, we've got a fawn coming in. That was actually a little button buck. A little button buck that uh, these deer, there's, there's like seven or eight of these does and fawns that keep coming in every every other night. Now that storm front's moving in. I don't know where those other deer are because that little buck is always with those six or seven deer and sometimes that big guy is following in behind. We'll sit tight here. Okay, I've got a bunch of deer coming. There's a deer gonna come right underneath me.
This guy we've been chasing for a couple of years. We call him Lucky. And now you know why. Because he dodged another bullet. And I'm gonna continue to keep coming out. Because those mistakes, they fuel my passion. They fuel the fire. And they keep me getting outdoors. Oh, that's gonna sting.